Greetings to all the audience. Welcome to the second episode of Environmental Auditing Series. In light of the trailer released in our last video, you might figure out the coming contents in this video. Yes, you've got it right. The scope, narrative references, terms and definitions, and principles of environmental auditing are about to meet you. No wonderings? It doesn't matter. Let me guide you deeper in environmental auditing. Wait, is your knowledge about environmental auditing still fresh? There are a few clues for you to take a review. ISO 1911-2003 is characterized by three interdependent standards comprising of ISO 14010-1996 for general information, ISO 14011-1996 for audit procedures, and ISO 14012-1996 for qualification criteria for environmental auditors. Sounds awfully the same? You only need to stay conscious of the number. 40,000 series merely provides guidelines for environmental management systems, whereas 1911 offers a tutorial for both quality management systems auditing and environmental management system auditing. Will environmental auditing benefit? Well, first and foremost, it provides principles to our audit and management programs need to refer then, we can follow the procedures within the standards to conduct any relevant audit. It also provides clear guidance on how to distinguish the outstanding auditors from the head of ordinary auditors. Finally, for the company and organization of interest, you are undoubtedly encouraged to adopt this standard to manage your audit program and environmental management systems. For auditors, now you guys may take a break first. Maybe your bosses and managers want to know more about quality and environmental management. Am I right? These are another long stories we don't cover, but we are willing to recommend two useful files. One is ISO 9001-2000 for quality management. Another is ISO 40050. 2002 for environmental management. By far, we've mentioned all this so many times. However, what is the accurate definition of those baffling terms such as audits, auditor, and competence in every sense? Based on the information of environmental auditing, audits means systematic, independent, and a documented process for obtaining audit evidence and evaluating it objectively to determine the extent to which the audit criteria are fulfilled, of which the audit criteria indicate set of policies, procedures, or requirements. Besides that, audit evidence shows the records, statements of a fact, or other information which are relevant to the audit criteria and verifiable. On the other hand, audit findings consist of results of the evaluation of the collected audit evidence against audit criteria. The major cast of environmental auditing also need to be clarified. Audit conclusion refers to the outcome of an audit provided by the audit team after consideration of the audit objectives and all audit findings. Audit client, of course, means the organization or person requesting an audit. For auditors, auditing indicates organization being audited, while the auditor means the person with the competence to conduct an audit. And then, all participation of auditors means the audit team. Other important characters include technical expert, a person who provides specific knowledge or expertise to the audit team, audit program, 
means the set of one or more of these planets for a specific time frame and directed towards a specific purpose. Audit plan is a description of the activities and arrangements for an audit. Audit scope indicates the extent of boundaries of an audit. Finally, what is the competence of an auditor? Competence demonstrates personal attributes and demonstrates the ability to apply knowledge and skills to audits. We can conduct auditing without following principles as much as we can draw a circle without using the compasses. Primarily, ethical conduct asks for the foundation of professionalism and trust, integrity, confidentiality, and discretion, which are essential to auditing. Then, in field presentation part, that audit findings, conclusions, and reports need to reflect the audit activities truthfully and accurately is an obligation of audit team. Regarding due professional care, Auditors should apply diligence and judgment now and again during auditing according to the magnitude of the auditing tasks they perform. On top of that, rule of independence provides basis for the impartiality of the audit and objectivity of the audit conclusions. Because auditors are independent from the activity being audited and are thus free from the basis and conflict of interest. Last but not least, evidence-based approach makes auditors able to draw a reliable and reproducible audit conclusion in a systematic audit process, which ensures the evidence is verifiable and the report is testable. Now we come to the quiz time. We've prepared some simple questions for the contents. Would you like to see what you forgot? First, which of three ISOs make up the new ISO 19011? Yeah, you've got it right. Answer is C. The second one, which of following is true? Yeah, take a second to think about it. The answer is A. Then, what are the principles related to auditors? Yeah, you are so smart. The answers are ethical conduct, fair presentation, due professional care. Now we've moved on to the next one, which is also the last one. What are the principles related to audit? Is that simple? The answers are independence and evidence-based approach. Do you get it all right for all the questions? Thanks for following our second episode.